I'll be back after a almost three week thing which goes to show that we have a mutual fellowship. It doesn't even death doesn't separate us from each other. We live on somewhere. Love moves on. As we're all centered on love still things. For their promises they shall fail, for their tongues they shall cease, but under love and Happy to be here as I say again this afternoon. I had this opportunity to talk to you just a little while. It's very warm. And tonight this is healing service. The closing of the revival. And we're going to try tonight as possible to minister to every one that we possibly can. It's cut most of the time in or praying for the sick. Now, I got home just very late but the next day, that was on Saturday or on Friday night, and then Saturday morning I had a third Saturday afternoon late. I had several emergencies that had to be taken care of right at once, and then I left for a third last night. I got in just a little while ago, about an hour. I had service this afternoon and tonight. Tomorrow at noon, I have service to you all in Indiana. So, you see where it goes, it's just constantly on the move. But we're very happy to be anywhere that we can speak just a little word for Jesus. I'm so thankful for the, the ministers here and then the thing that how to inspire or help them along. That's the purpose of being here, trying to help others. We, I could never take the message to all the world myself. It sort of takes thousands of others together. And together, when we can unite ourselves, forgetting about our churches, our doctrines, and so forth, to just know this one thing, Christ. Know that among us. And I think that God will continue to do a marvelous work right away. I believe we're going to see the moving of the Spirit like we have never in all the ages. I feel led to say this, which I have felt for some time, in the last few weeks. And I believe that a little potion that God has given me. Back a minute to the other. God is going to step it up again and into something else that will be more marvelous than the one of the other two signs that God has given me to do before the people. I believe it will be more gracious than ever been again. Pray for me. And if others request the inspiration and just move up close to God like a great Christian army go marching on. I want to say again from the little present and things that were given to me this week. I didn't get the old until I got home. It's all the friendship. Even the little girl and I, when we got home, when someone gave me a box of cookies, and I need to go to the cookies instead of a little girl and I. I'm very happy to have it. Now, that we do not wish to take too much of time. How many people are in the building here today that are Christians? Let's see our Christians all over the All my life. Is there any sinners? Let's see if anybody's a sinner. Put their hand. You mean that you're not
might find thee dear to their heart. Those who without the Holy Spirit, may they come today. They, O oh God, search me and try me. Is there any, any evil in me? And wash it by thy blood. Thou might receive thee, the Holy Spirit, in my heart. Forgive us of our shortcomings, for we, thy children, have error. Many a times we error from the way and we pray that you forgive us. Bless the word I do not know. You know, Father, that I do not know one word that I shall say to that Just announcing, perhaps, on the return of the prodigal son to speak. Just go to wait on you. What did you say? We'll say. That's all the words that go forth. May they fall in the fertile ground. I do not know why I said that subject to speak on the return of the prodigal son. I haven't read this scripture for the past eight years that I know of. Haven't read this scripture for the scripture. And to speak on it, I guess it's been eight or ten years ago since I spoke on it. And I think when I did then, I approached it from the way of the Pharisee, the son that was left at home that felt bad towards his brother. And I believe that's the way the story goes. And he was very provoked because the father had received the, the lost, straying son back. And his attitude of approach to it. And I spoke to the church about how the nation could not feel that way that when a sinner comes to the altar, the whole church are together right around him. Don't you believe that? Not long ago, down near Firstville, Kentucky, where I was born, it was on Memorial Day. It's been about five years ago. I was speaking there on Sunday afternoon, and I was just thinking a few moments ago, what a difference. Here we are, cars parked around, a lovely auditorium. And down there was a little old church made of clapboard shingles, split logs, way back up. And when they'd taken me up that day, there was horses all along. The speaking of the morning had him singing. I was standing there on the platform, and they had the amen corner on one side and the ladies over on the other side. And they were didn't have no song book at all. They had an old organ that you pumped with a stick. Did you ever see one? Let's see if anybody ever seen an organ. Oh yes, that you pump with a great big pole that cut out of the woods that pumped this organ. And sometimes they wouldn't use it because some of the keys were out. They had an old tuning fork. They get to that part, the ministry will that all catch it and start singing. They were singing, We'll fear no evil when we come to die, for Jesus will take us in his arms and carry us safely home. Those people, how that they respected God. I spoke to them about divine healing that afternoon. And or that night, rather. And the next day I was squirrel hunting up on the side of the hill. I heard the stalls going down the collar, and I thought I'd go down to see what they were doing. Four or five men were standing down there with their rifles sitting against a tree. A lot of fuse goes on. And they were sawing wood, and one of them speaking said, I believe that preacher told the truth. And one of them said, That was a blankety blankety good sermon. That's the only way you had to express yourself, I guess. And there was, I walked up where they were at, they were talking. And one of them had a great big chew of tobacco. Almost looked like that big sticking out the side of his mouth. His jaw stuck down. He was 
just a head speaker. When I walked up, I said, hello. And they turned around. This big fella looked at me, swallowed that sugar back, took off his hat and said, good morning, folks. Right now. I, I thought, wow, that was enough to kill him almost. A great big wad of tobacco on my back. But while speaking in the afternoon, dinner had been served. Of course, I believe the people up here, that would have been lunch. But it's dinner. I eat three meals a day, breakfast, dinner, and supper down there in the south. So I got mixed up when they were going to say dinner time up here, supper time. I, I missed out supper. So anyhow, the horses were chomping down in the woods. And I was speaking on the subject of the resurrection of Christ. And when a big old boy standing back there, the place was crowded and full, and he ran to the altar. God have mercy on my soul. And when he came up, well, he never got halfway to the altar, but God had saved me. While there's about 50 of those old mammies out there, grabbed him around the neck and down the altar and then went with him. There's about 50 some odd conversions that afternoon, and now they didn't get down there and just make a dry eyed confession and get up. They prayed through about two hours of it. They got up their shoulders so wet you just bring them out before they perspired. They got up shouting and down to the woods and up over the hill. They went hard. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Listen, folks. They might have been Baptists, but they had real old time Holy Ghost religion. That's right. Because they lived that way. By your fruits, you're an old. That's true. Now, I'll read you pray, if you will, over in 15th chapter of St. Luke. We wish to read these verses of the Scripture, beginning with the 11th verse of the 15th chapter of St. Luke. And it said, A certain man had two sons. The younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falls to me. And he divided, divided unto them and lived. Not many days after the younger gathered all together and took his journey to a far country, and there wasted his substance around his living. And we had spent all there rolled a mighty famine in that land, and he began to be in want. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him to his field to feed swine. And he would vain have filled his belly with the husk that the swine did eat, and no man gave unto him. And when he came to himself, he said, How many hard servants my father had, bread enough to spare, and I perish with hunger. I will arise and go to my father and say unto him, Father, I sinned against heaven and before thee, and I'm no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me of thy heart and earth. And he rose and came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him, and had compassion, and ran, and fell on his neck, and kissed him. His son said unto him, Father, I sinned against heaven and thy father. No more Jesus. 
Jesus speaking this parable, he was trying to express the feeling of the Father to the lost, to those who are alienated from God, gone out. Remember, at one time we were all alienated, cut off from God, without mercy, without hope, walking about in the world of darkness. Walks forever. Jesus has taken our place as a sinner and died in our stead. And the Father received the gladness of that such as will come to the end. How the harvest God. I've often wondered what would life be? What would I ever expect if it had not been for Jesus? Or where would I be? What would be my I laid in the hospital not long ago, met a medical doctor by the information and looked into my face and had her anesthetic come in and take the money from my heart. Shocked that it was my anesthetic a little above what it should have been and they come to my heart. My heart was only beating 17 times. The doctor told my father to go to the bed and said, Hey, you're going to be dead.
and the fig made leaves when they had to face God was no good. And you will find out, my dear friend, that man made very theories will not stand when you're coming down to the last breath of this body and this life. It's good to live with those things, but you can't die by it. Now, I guess for my age of the ministry, I've probably stood by as many dying people as, as anyone of my age because I've been much called on to the dying. Not long ago, a certain young lady in our city had received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. She came up to the tabernacle. Another young lady in the city, very popular, belonged to a modern type of religious group that denied the blood and the covering and said that we were a cult and a bunch of holy rollers because that we believed in the saving grace of Christ. If that's what it takes to be a holy roller, then I am one, or I believe in the blood. This young lady went to dance shows, but she was the Sunday school teacher in the church. The church denied the blood of Christ. That there was no such a thing. The pastor said it dried up 1900 years ago. A social gospel. And by and by, the young lady got out with this boy. Fine looking little lady. This little girl came up the tabernacle. She kind of dressed kind of old fashioned. She used to go down the street in her hair pulled back to the tight as she could get it without the. Ever what you call the manicure on her face? Ever what the stuff is that they wear? On down the street, she would go. Yes, it's the truth. We teach against it. God help preachers to get out to the gospel. Listen, ladies. There was only one woman in the Bible that ever painted herself to meet a man, and that was Jezebel, and God sent her to the dog. So when you see where that's how do this dog meet? That's exactly what it was. God sent her to the dog. You don't want to be like her. God will make you pretty in your way. Pretty is as pretty does. But even our holiness churches are letting down. You know that. Better come back to the old viewing line again. Back to the gospel. Now, notice this young lady, she just carried on everywhere. Went out to dance and party and so forth. She take it sick. She didn't understand what was the matter, but when the doctor got to her, she had a material disease to get too far from her. Right shot. Oh, the pastor told her she go right on to heaven because she was the son of the So they all gather in the room to see her go out and the angels of the Lord come together. Just passed from the street a little while before that. The pastor was standing out in the hall of the home, lovely big home, fine people. He just stepped out of the room. Class of all men singing songs, but see her go to heaven. And the pastor stepped out to smoke out in the hall. And when death struck the girl, she began to get history. And she said, Where is that girl? And they said, What girl? They said, Here's all your flashes, but I'm not talking about them. I'm talking about that girl that called her name. That I'm up there at the tabernacle that used to speak to me about my soul. I said, go get her. They went to the pastor, and he came running in. He said, now, honey, listen. He said, we'll call the doctor and give you a shot. You're getting a little hysterical. She said, I'm not hysterical. She said, you deceiver of man. I'm lost and going to hell because you taught me that. And the girl died and went out to meet God lost, crying for the girl. Look, brother, when you come to 
come down to the end of this life's journey, you will wish you had a lived a holy, clean life before God. Be sure to remember that. Now about your church, what you belong to, that doesn't mean nothing. What you are in your heart. God ain't going to ask you whether what church you belong to. It's what you are in your heart is what God's going to say. Notice how the Jesus speaking here about the Father and the Son going away. He must have been had this on his mind of how the God searching, calling, pulling the people to repentance. And today the Holy Spirit still going to the land, calling out to the lost and the dying. Before we leave this here about the big leaves, I wish to say one more word. Notice what God did. God, when he met with Adam and Adam, they had their own made religion. As it been 24 hours ago to someone said, Brother Brandon, you know what my religion is? He said, my religion is the golden rule. You know what you have I said, that's good, but that hasn't got any salvation. That's right. Except the man be born again, he will know why it's in the kingdom. Born of the Spirit of God. Renew, regenerate, become a new person in Christ Jesus. Old things pass away and all things become new. The bird changed over. Going to rope the wind turn come this way. Life's the first thing. Now, but then when they stood before God, Adam was afraid to come out, he said, I'm naked. Now notice, God went out and got the skin and come in and made aprons and tied them around. Now notice, if God got skin, he had to kill something. Something had to die to make a cover. And he killed something and got the skin off of it. And something died in their place because the penalty was dead. So an innocent victim had to die for the guilty to cover them up. And so is it today, friends. Not the golden rule, which is all right. Not the peace of man, which is holy. But God kills something to cover you up. His son, Christ Jesus. Died on Calvary, the innocent for the guilty, to make a way that you and I might be innocent in Him before God. That's the thing that the Holy Spirit is churching to the land today to try to find someone to believe on Him, on Christ Now, our story starts very. Pathetic story to me. As I shall try to approach the just a little bit now. This is mostly. Let's set a drama this afternoon. Picture back just a little bit so that the children might receive it. God help our children to be Not long ago, the great G. Edgar Hoover outfit, Captain Al Brock. Most everyone here knows me because my 
native home is here in Washington. Home. He said, my business is to break up racket. And he said, when I heard this grand uh, pair of friends of the city, I went to Fresno to stop the racket. He said, I've seen those things. I heard the preacher speak. And he didn't seem like a racket here to me. That we brought, went and got a medical doctor, and sent a little boy in there that was been paralyzed. And his limbs, polio, polio were just seen. And said when he came to, he stayed each night, finally got the boy in the line. And said when he came to, his brother ran said he's a victim of polio. And he asked the father if he would bleed. And so the father was on the police force. And said he said he would believe. Said Brother Brandon said within the space of eight days, the boy shall be well. And said we've watched him. And said the little lad standing behind the first year night, perfectly normal. He turned back to school. He said, I want you all to well to rest assured of this. We check their findings, what they do with it. And the thing, he said, I want you to know that it's not a racket. That is true to the hand of Almighty God. The next day, he take me down to this big jail where they had there. We had the young ladies in there. Some of them, gun fighters. They were walking up and down the floor, cursing one another. He said, what do you think of that, Reverend Brennan? I said, oh, my. I said, can I speak a word to him? He said, certainly. I went down to the young man there, and there they were in there in a marble position. He showed me how from his desk they pressed the button to open the first cell that could only be from here. Someone would shoot him and touch the button here in long ever sweet and everything all around the place. Then as he was finished, he had two guards with him, and when we went down into the gallery, and we like guns, don't you say that about the desk? We went down into the gallery, beneath, way down. He said, here's where we practice with the young man. He began to tell how far you could be from one place to the other. And I was shooting so forth. And I noticed he kept looking down at me. And I wondered what he was going to do. He just missed the officers that were with him. And we were in this little place full of metal all around. He said, Brother Brandon, if you ask me, what do you think of what I'm going to show you? I don't know. He said, Wander is there to chance. I said, what do you mean? He said, I can't do a bad name. I try to hold it to the wall. He said, but I really want to find Jesus. And I said, do you believe? He said, yes, sir. But I have it.
just fixed in our minds for a moment. I can see living there a lovely old couple work hard all their lives and get to the sun. Of course, the sun always falls air to the inheritance. And then this younger son, perhaps, let's see, they went to church every Sunday and they love God and they serve God with all their heart. But one day, this younger son would say he would start going out with a group that he had no business going to. This
like a born shooting day. Well, the first thing you know happened. See, now he's going to ask his daddy, and his dad's getting old, his mother's getting old. But he comes in one day and gets the fire, gets the sass to his mother and his father. The first thing he said, Father, I uh, want you to give me my potion. I'm tired of laying around the house here and doing these things. All I was doing was going to go to church and rest the morning. I want to do as the rest of us are. Don't you never follow the crowd, you follow me. Well, that's the attitude of young people, isn't it? I want to do like the rest of us are. Don't know if you're patterned yourself by them, patterned or if you're patterned by me. Then I hear the people used to. I hear the father say, Well, son, this is the only way I have to live. This is the only life that well I have an inheritance. My right. What is your right? I can see the poor father and father even very much. So what are you going to do, son? He said, I'm going down to the city and live like the civilization. Stay with the mother and I. We love him with all of our heart. We want to be good to you. We've done everything we can. But so that was satisfying. Satan has got a whole call. So he was going down to the city to live by the direct worldly people. Then I see his father tell the mother, say, Mother, you know what happened? Uh uh, our boy. It's got the wrong path. He's a young man now, so he said, Tell the farm, take all that I have and divide it among you and his brother. I'll be talking. And to the old mother, God bless her, old mother. I had one of them. How I love her. How I love her. I was about to be a year or two. She was pretty much coming out like the old mother had got the very long time. I was so enjoying all the things that she had done for her people. I said, Mother, I. So, Mother, I can see the prayer in her story that they can see her go through the sun and face the sun. Mother can watch the door and the fire. I do everything she could. Or you have. Now I hear you say, Mama, you get on the way with that stuff. That's old time. I don't want something like that. I'm going to have my way. I'm really of age now, so I'm going to have my way about it. See her cut her arms down to the buggy. She was buggy and she was going to take her out of the way. She was going to shoot her mother. No objection to her. She had to stop her little feet. The guy who said they would be too crazy to fall asleep. Without natural affection. That's the way it is to get her. The child rules the whole town. They're the ones who go to the ball. Without a natural attack. I see the mother talk to them. Look at them. One of these days, we get everything in the world.
But isn't she horrible? I wouldn't be to have a step at the table with her. That was her girlfriend. Now instead of the girl speaking up, she turned her head. When she got off the train, this old wrinkled woman run up to her and threw her arms around the girl to kiss her. When the girl was so provoked, she got away. Got away from the church of God. She so provoked that she turned her back to look at away. She said, My darling, my darling, what happened to you? And she was so embarrassed because of her girlfriend. Just then, one of the conductors who knew the story walked up and grabbed that young girl by the shoulder and said, Look at here, Mary. What do you mean? That you ashamed of your mother since you've been away to college? That remember, you know the story. That one day the house was burning down. Your mother was a beautiful woman. Far more beautiful than you are. Or ever would be. And said you were a little crying baby when she was hanging the clothes in the backyard. And all at once the house caught fire. And here comes the fire engines that come it out. And the house is a flame. And you were crying up in the upstairs. No one would dare to pierce the flame. That little mother wrapped herself and in there she ran through the flame. She grabbed you and took her clothes from her body and wrapped your face up. Wrap you all up and hug your arms and place her own face to the flames and through the flames she comes to rescue you. But that's why you're pretty today. That's why she's scarred. Are you ashamed of those scars? That's the way Jesus did for us. When we were sinners, ugly before God, cast away, turned away, he came, the lovely Son of God, from the ivory palace and come down along the earth and took the shame of on himself and the sin of on himself and died there at Calvary crying. Should I be ashamed of his gospel? Christians on the streets we are ashamed to stand up for the gospel. When he was marred and made ugly that you could be free, he was marred to sin when you could be free from sin. Don't never deny it. Always loving. Stand for that which is true. Stand for his gospel. And now, that's the way of the attitude nearly of young people today. This young son is feeling the same way. He said, Mother, I don't want no more to do with this family. All you do is go to church. It's all I hear. Watch. I can see the old father put a sale sign up now. Kind of dramatizing it, of course. The benefit of the young people. Then I can see put a sale sign up to sell the old farm, get all the goods together, and divide it up among the boys. Mother and dad will just live as long as their potion lasts, maybe, and then it'll be over. Notice, I can see when they divided the potion to the young boy, got his money in his pocket, he said, Now I'll have a good time. The next morning I can see him go and say to his mother, Old lady, Pack my clothes now. I'm going to leave in the morning. Oh, my. How that poor old mother would go and get the little things that he wore when he was a little boy. Tuck them away. Look at them. I see her pick up a little pair of shoes. You know, mothers like to keep things like that. Mama's got my old shoes. I wore them out. She's got the long dress like she had the baby. It's a treasure to a mother's heart. I can see this old mother take these little shoes and set them up on the organ. Get down there and pray and say, Oh, God, take care of my boy. Leaving me now. How many of you have ever had an old-fashioned mother like that? Let's see your hand. Oh, aren't they lovely and sweet? Take care of my boy. He's gone out with the world, and I don't know what will happen to him. Only take care of him. Pray. Did you ever have your mother pray for you? Oh, when my little old mother, I've seen her go back in the room to herself when we would be without food and kneel down on her knees and cry out to God. God give us some more old fashioned praying mothers like that. That's the backbone of our nation. That's right. 
good God save mother. I can see her crying. I said, God, God, take care of my boy. No matter what you ever do, she's forgiven. Her heart's always ready to forgive and come back. Then I can see the old daddy just weary, walking back and forth up and down the outside. In the barn, up in the house, back and forth. And I hear mother go to the door and say, what's the matter, dad? Oh, I don't know, mother. You know, our parents, if they're good God saved people, they worry about their children. I'm a father myself, and I've got a little boy sitting here looking at me right now. God knows, mother. I just want those heads to die the day to let me die 10,000 times. That's right. But he's saved. It's the love that we have for our offspring. That's the reason God so loved the Lord, His offspring. That He came Himself and died that we might be free. Faith of Him will be Himself. I noticed this father weary walking back and forth up and down. The next day, when it comes time for the boy to leave, I can see him pack his little suitcase and get out there. I can see him go around and say, It's all the folks to start off. Mother, say just a moment. Before you go, let's have prayer one more time. Kneel down the floor and see the old mother and dad with their arms around one another. Pray to God. God, we pray that he was to this Lord. He's gone out from away from us now, wandering. Please, Father, take care of our people. I'm going to say, oh, this restless Father, pray. They didn't want to hear them prayers of mother and dad. No more. He had other things on his mind. That's the reason sometimes we're impatient. Just can't wait a few minutes. Can't pray. Can't wait for a prayer. But there will come a time, friend, when you'll have all eternity to think about. Pray now. Be ready now to meet the man. I can hear him pray and get up. Mother try to hug him and he turned his head and his dad put his arms around him and cried, said, Oh, you all want off to start off and went over the hill like see father and mother stand there with their hands and arms around one another, waving goodbye to him as he went off over the hill, down into the city to be with the rest of the world. And this parent I see them return back into the house again, weeping, crying, praying. I can see him get to the big crowd down there. And as long as his money lasted, he was a good fellow. That's the way the world treats you. As long as you've got money, you've got friends. But when your money's gone, your friends are gone. That's dry weather friends. I know a friend who will stick by you if you haven't got a penny. Jesus Christ, Son of God. I've been to a place where I had not a cent. He loved me. He loved me just as much if I was in heaven and as if we had a million dollars. He loves you just the same. That's pure and holy and adulterated love. Comes from God alone down into His people. And that's the way we should love one another with that godly love. Notice. And I could see Him in the great, in the places of gambling devices and all the veiled fame and so forth. And after a while, his money was gone and his friends was gone. He was a popular boy. He could have a date with any of the girls. But when his money was gone, they were gone with the crowd. That's just the way the devil is. As long as you've got money and popular, all right. But when that time wears out, you're finished. That's all before the world. And I can see him, he had to get himself a job. So he went to a citizen of the country, a hog raiser. Look where he dropped from now. A Jew. Not even supposed to put their hands on the carcass of a hog. And he was in need. He was starving. And he had to take a job. And to give him the word of thing, that's the way the devil does. Just as soon as he can get you started down the hill, he will trap you with everything he's got. I see. He was a good fellow then. 